scriptwriter and uh, I'm working with uh, TV shows and also uh, developing some films. And um <coughs> I uh, started uh, working with the uh, cinema when I was 15 uh, in my hometown Aarhus in Denmark. Uh, where I was a part of an atelier uh, doing my first short films. And uh, I kept working with film uh, while I studied at university. I studied uh, something called History of Ideas and later uh, Modern Philosophy in France at Paris 8. And um, after that I was accepted to the Danish Film School uh, on the screenwriting uh, s selection. And uh, that was a two-year uh, formation at the time. And uh, since then I've been working uh, in Danish film industry, uh, writing uh, as a in the beginning as an episode writer, so working for a creator on shows like The Rain that was made for Netflix. Uh, and I did a fiction podcast uh, for Danish public broadcast, the DR that was later turned into a TV show uh, that I wrote and created called Where Were You? that has been on a Scandinavian broadcaster or platform called Viaplay. Um, and now I'm developing a new TV show for the Danish broadcaster TV2 and working on a feature film uh, with the Danish Film Institute and other projects uh, yeah, with the directors and other writers. I think that I do try just in my work to push something to be a bit different, uh, in especially when it comes to TV shows. Um, so it's not like I want to revolutionize anything, but like take small steps of, uh, yeah, definitely want to do something that uh, is not only for entertaining, that has some kind of more uh, a level of like saying something uh, about uh, also um, society. Uh, and uh, modern life. When I get an idea, I don't write it down. So if it's uh, uh, if it's not important, I think I will just forget it again. You know. But if I th if I think because I think like it is subjective. It's like what I I have to work on something that I like. I can't think too much about what other people's other people like uh, because then uh, I won't have a, a clue like what I'm doing. So if like for a longer time this idea comes back to me, uh, I think that's the first test of if it's important to me. I mean, I can only make stuff that's important to me. I can't think like it's important to everyone because uh, that's not a way of thinking. Um, so if it comes back and it gets more, there's like getting more and more substance uh, by playing with the idea in my head, then I will think this is important enough for me to to tell it. I won't be afraid that it doesn't have any sense. Uh, I'm more like, I think this has meaning. Is this the right way to tell it, you know? Like, uh, and is it enough? Uh, does it have enough material? Can it, uh, can there be enough characters in this and to, to, for it to be a real story? My own life experiences, I think, uh, gives me more and more uh, material to write on and I, I'm definitely way more open. I think when I was like a young student, I was more like uh, uh, thinking about what m the, the, the filmmakers that I admired were doing, whereas now I'm more like way more uh, using uh, my life experiences and uh, people I meet uh, to create the stories. I have uh, worked for others, uh, for creators, as an episode writer, and that's completely different from creating your own shows. When I'm working for others, I will, I mean, we will have a lot of time talking about all kinds of stuff. Everyone is bringing their ideas, but uh, ultimately, it's the creator who has the, it's he has the vision, or she. Wait, I worked with a guy, so <laughs> uh, he had the vision, and he uh, he has to follow it through. So we're helping him. Um, and for my own shows, because there are few episodes, like uh, se seven and six, I have preferred to write myself, but having someone, like have the director very involved in it. Not writing, but giving a lot of notes, and we have days where we put it up on a board and we talk about it. Um, so it's depending on the project, uh, but uh, I mean, of course, the choice of people is the most important thing, if you have to work together. 
not that you necessarily are alike. Actually, you shouldn't. I think you have to be able to challenge each other. Uh, but it's like casting or what I mean it's like or finding director it's very important the collaboration so just like you have and and it can be difficult to know in the beginning uh, who you can work with and so that is it's it's difficult you know and in I mean in the states they have a completely different way of doing it where there are like so many more people than in Denmark we've been maximum five in a room I think there there can be like 10 to 12 and everyone has like a very specific role um, yeah, but I think, I do believe for, for TV show, it is important to know that the creator has to make it. So you have to, you can't have someone coming and be like, I have all these kinds of ideas and all different. I mean, you have to be able to like, uh, it's the person who has like the, the responsibility of writing it, who has to know what the story is about. So defining the roles, it's important to, and then spending a lot of time together and be generous about talking about your own life and where you come from, private things that help to build a relationship because that's what you need to be able to work together and create something. You have a story and then there's like, uh, there's a great part when you think everything is possible for your story, like uh, this is a uh, genius what I, <laughs> what I uh, made up and uh, this is gonna be great. And that's like mostly when you don't have to write that much still, like you have to make a one pager or like talk about it to someone. Uh, and I have a really good producer who's always like, this sounds great, and it's like the world of possibilities. And then when you start writing, like, I would say, like, the formats that are kind of unsexy, it's like you have to write a synopsis and a treatment, <laughs> and you have to go sell it. And then it's like a lot about structure, but you're not feeling it so much because you're not on the script level yet. Uh, and then there's a, you spend a lot of time on doing that and see what works. Uh, and then I think for me, a lot of stuff happens on when you start writing a, a, a script. And uh, I think uh, my teacher used to call it a vomit draft, the first draft, because you just like get everything out and you don't think about structure. And you just, I try to do that because I like to get like, get the script written and then edit it afterwards uh, many times. And then you just write without thinking, you know? And that's really important too to get everything out. And and often you will some will some some and you, no one should read this. It should only be for yourself. And then you read it again, and some things are really bad. And then some of them are quite good, or they have some things like a scene that can become key to you about what the story is about. Uh, and then you start working around that. Like I really like this scene, and uh, I always think also like in of course every episode or there has to be like some scenes that I truly love, you know, like, and that should kind of be the most important scenes, of course, of the, of the show. And then I start editing in it. So it goes in different, like, when you're more struct structural and when you're more intuitive. When I write an episode, I don't think, okay, I think about some, some, uh, some things that should be in it and often I will work with like, a cliffhanger if it's a television show because I want like the audience to keep watching but it's way more with cinema that I use this structure thing uh, and I think that's because I'm I think that's actually a good part of, of, of writing a TV show is that it's like it's a bit more vast and you can digress and you can follow a, a character more in one episode for me it's still more playful uh, or at least that's why I like it um, and yeah, I think it's funny, but when script writers work together in a writer's room, for example, I think none of us have the same idea of what it actually means to use this structure. Like everyone will be like, this is definitely the first uh, plot point of the story. And then it's a bit arbitrary because then we're not agreeing on it even. I feel like none of us really know sometimes what it actually does. But sometimes it's good to have it. It's more like if you have a a story and you can sense somehow that something is lacking and then you can look at it a more schematically and say like what is the first turning point or the midpoint of the story and then it will help you to see there's something kind of lacking here uh, maybe and but I think like it's always like a crutch it's like when you reach some kind of like a dead end where you can't uh, continue it can help you uh, the more you know about your characters, the more you know about the story, it's easier to write it without looking so much at this model. But I think it's kind of 
I don't know if it's necessary, but you know, the joke is that every time you look at a film, even art films, they have this structure somehow, that there's a way of telling a story. Um, yeah, but I can see it's a problem when it becomes like the main thing, like uh, you, you have this model and you hang a story onto it instead of doing the opposite, if you know what I mean. The conflict, yeah, I think, I mean, for me, I've seen movies without conflict that I liked also. Uh, um, but I can't do that. I mean, I will need some kind of dilemma or paradox or conflict in it, I guess. Um, it's kind of a tough question because I don't teach, so I don't think about these things so much. It's more intuitive. Um, and I think it's one of the biggest part of the work is to recognize when there is uh, yeah, a story. I guess there's some kind of question you ask in the beginning of your story that has to be big enough to to be explored from dis different perspectives. Before I was like, you can have an open end or not, but I think you need to, deep inside of you, know kind of the message of your story. And be when I was starting writing TV shows, I thought that that seemed like to reduce the story, but I think it's like, it can be maybe a bit hypocrite to pretend you don't have a message. I think you do, and then you're pretending you don't have it. And then I think it's better to become aware, even though you're not saying it, to your audience, I think you're still saying it, kind of. So to think about what, what it is you actually wanna, wanna say with your story. And I don't think that's the same as the premise, uh, because we work a lot, I don't know what you call it in French, but the premise of the story, like there's a theme that's more easy to say, the premise is more difficult uh, to work around, and then kind of uh, in the end there's a message of like, uh, I don't know, yeah. In terms of this question, do you believe that it could be resolved? Are you like nihilistic about it? Are you optimistic? Um, yeah. But that is like, you don't know this, or I don't know this at all when I start working. And often you will be surprised in the end what, what I mean, after editing and maybe even after now, if I rewatch the show I made like one year ago, I will be surpri surprised about some things about what it ended up being about. And when I read the reviews, I was surprised also about what people got out of it. So, yeah, it's a long process to know <laughs> what the story was, I think. Not to forget that I'm not doing it alone at all. So the question will always be refined by first uh, a co-writer that will no my producer will be the first probably i'll talk to uh, then when i will be pitching i will get responses from audience and i will hear their opinion about it and later on of course like yeah writing with a co-writer especially the director will i guess for me be the most important partner in it because uh, he or she will will direct it and, and uh, direct actors and uh, and have another perspective on it than I have because I don't uh, I don't direct at, at the moment and then the actors will have and then yeah uh, it will it will the collaborative part of it will help of course to be more clear on what you're trying to say uh, because you don't sit with it by yourself that much you really have to have dialogues and and I think even like sometimes you get annoying questions from people who are financing. But I think like most questions, even if you find them stupid, there's most of the time something true to it. Like even though they're pinpointing something that you don't want to go that way, what they're saying is probably like some kind of lack in your, like in your story. So I think like also very important is to be kind of humble, to understand uh, you don't know everything. I mean, I tend to think I know everything about my story, but I definitely don't. And the more experience you get, the more you will also be able to see that in the process of writing, like, okay, now I really have to listen to these people and not just write uh, these darling scenes, uh, because I think that because in the editing it will, anyway, we'll have an issue with this. You learn more to see these things, I think. Uh, when I was like studying philosophy in short films, I thought I was never going to do TV shows because I wasn't that into it, or even the TV shows I like was like very far from something I wanted to do. Um, but uh, now I think like what I really want to is is to try to tell something uh, <laughs> what you say like important for a broad audience, not just a few. And so coming back to also the structure, uh, the TV show I made and also the one I'm making now has this uh, element of thriller and crime. And also the one I'm working on now has like a courtroom uh, drama in it. And I think, uh, for example, genre uh, can help you a lot to tell something 
uh, a bit more like difficult, but still engaging the viewer. So, you know, like a thriller has a grammar and uh, a courtroom drama has a grammar that engages you as an audience to follow the story. And But it can be a really good way to tell about some characters because you have a motor driving the story, like who did the crime as it was in my first show or in this one also what happened uh, in the past. Uh, a mystery or something that creates suspense. And I, for me, it's like very helpful to have these things um, to tell a story. And my favorite TV show is, is Twin Peaks. And it's also about all these characters. But it's in, I mean, if you cut it to the bone, it's just about who killed the girl, you know? Like a very simple uh, question for a crime show. So these things uh, can help a lot because you will also know when it's a show, because it's many episodes, you will know like, I will need like a suspect in this uh, in this episode. I will need like uh, the mystery to go further, but still, I want to tell about all these characters and their lives. Um, but yeah, it's a it's a motor driving the whole thing, uh, and for me, it's very I like that. This is uh, a bit cliche, but it's it's just to work, you know, like uh, work with it, get as much. I mean, experience is like really gold, and that's annoying because. Uh, filmmaking is so expensive often, so it's difficult to get. I mean, of course, writing is can be easier in a way of, as I said, like now I'm doing my own my own stuff, but I used to write for others. But of course, that was extremely helpful because I wrote so many scripts, even though they were for other people's shows. I got so much experience doing that. But it 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 is to get I think as much experience as possible. And uh, I mean, it's. I am sure I was pretty arrogant when I was young and, and making short films. Um, and I think maybe you need that arrogance also to succeed, but sometimes maybe to be a bit more like to really listen to other people because they can help you, you know? You don't always always have the, the right answer yourself. The main idea has to be something you so strongly feel yourself somehow, whether it's about death or survival or love between a mother and her child or whatever, you have to feel it strong enough to to uh, to be able to tell it. But it's difficult to to give a recipe on, on, on how to do that. But yeah, you have to avoid, and, and that's also maybe checking in with other people who tell you the truth. Is, is it you who should tell it or should it be someone else or should you tell it with someone else? And what is your role, you know, in it? Mm -hmm.